Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing, and the title is correct. This plugin changed my life. Now, when you normally think of plugins changing your life, um, and I think uh, I speak for myself, but I think I speak for a lot of people out there as well, that you know, generally you're looking for something that sounds different, something that gives you a different color or tone that you can add to your palette so that you know, when you justify making that purchase, you're like, okay, I don't have this color, so I need to have this. And um, this plugin, though, it's a little bit different. Um, it's 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 definitely um, you know far beyond or far it's far removed from what's out there already. Like there's there's a lot of focus on you know tones and colors, whether it be compressors, you know, emulating consoles, you know, EQs, whatever. And this plugin really separates itself from that. It's really taking plugin design and moving it into the future. At least I think plugin companies and manufacturers need to be thinking um, like Blue Cat did with this particular plugin. And, um, you know, hopefully they continue to design and build plugins that we've never seen before. And that's exactly what I think this plugin is. And I think the biggest feature for me is the is the hosting of the VSTs. Like that was like, like instant buy. I didn't even have to think about it. I demoed it, of course, but literally after a day of demoing it, um, you know, I knew that this is something that I needed. So, so all those plugins that I was craving and I was missing from the VST world, I'm able to get back now. And um, but yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't just stop there. Like there's a lot of other things that you can do with this plugin that's really cool and really handy. So I'll show some of that stuff. I'm not gonna really get too into details as to what everything does with this plugin. There's already a few videos out there that show that. And I'll let those people shine in that aspect. Um, I'll try to give you something a little bit different. I'll show you my perspective and sort of how I use it and you know why I use it and all that stuff. And um, yeah, we can go from there. Yeah, sorry, before we get into it though, I reached out to Blue Cat Audio, like after I tested the plugin and I tried it out and everything, I was really excited about it. And I said, you know, if there's any way that I could ex extend like some sort of offer to, to my subscribers and followers and everything. And um, they were really cool about it. So they're offering 10%. So if you go uh, look down below in the description, there's a 10% or there's a coupon code there and you can get 10% off of this plugin or, or any plugin really in their, in their whole library. So... So that's cool. That was really nice of them. I really do appreciate that. Like I said, the biggest um, reason for me using this plugin is for hosting VSTs. So, for instance, um, on this bass here, on this bass part, I used the Ferric TDS. Now, this is a plugin that I've literally been missing for, I don't know, the past five or six months. And... Um, it's just one of those plugins. It's like I think it came out in 2009 and, and ever since it came out It's just been one of those gems and There's always some sort of use for it whether it's on drums or it's on bass I mean you can even use it on vocals sometimes across the entire mix It really really does sound good and there's a, a lot of uses for it. So um, In this case, I'll show you what I was able to do with the bass and remember this is a hosting hosting the VST so I just wanted to show you that you know everything works as it should so let me solo this bass here and yeah that looks good let me just go here and make sure we're on the course all right this is before If you're paying attention to this volume down here, I mean the peak volume's not changing. There's just something about this plugin that just it sounds amazing on bass. Um, so yeah, like I mean, if you kind of grind up the 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 mid range with this plugin, and you know if it's not adding that low one that you want, um, this is a cool plugin from Sonomous. Um, pretty sure this is sort of mimicking a Pultec sort of style EQ. Um, they do have a newer version that's released, like a pro version. But honestly, this thing for free it pff, sounds friggin' amazing. So I just boost a little bit around 30 hertz to bump up some of that low end that, you know, potentially that plug-in, uh, the ferric was, uh, you know, potentially getting rid of some of that bottom end. So let's turn it on. The 
base just literally comes to life. So yeah, so that's the one the one thing that I do with uh, with this plugin, and I do that a lot because there's a lot of good plugins out there, especially the variety of sound stuff. I use a lot of his his plugins. Uh, you know the Ferric, you know the new VBL that he released. I'm starting to use that one quite a bit. Um, also the Baxter EQ that he has. I mean that friggin' EQ. Like I swear to God, if he added two more bands to that thing, like the in the middle range, like the low mids and the higher mids, I honestly think I would use that EQ like way more than I do right now but it since it's a little bit limited in, in the frequency uh, response and the range that you can get I'm not using as much as I probably would want to but honestly if he just added two more bands I would I would use that thing on like not everything but you know on a lot of different things but I also added um, this to the drums again it's another one of my favorite plugins that I like to use a lot the volume 11 from Sir Elliot and this thing uh, same thing with the the Bootsy the the fair TDS like there's something about this that adds that crunch and that weight to the to sounds and I just can't explain it. In this case I, I threw it on the drums so I'll show you what that sounds like before and after. So yeah, there's something about this plugin as far as like clipping. Um, it's adding a little bit of clipping. It's adding some distortion, um, some compression. Like it's it's adding a bunch of things all at the same time. And really, there's only two knobs that you have to worry about, except for maybe this one, which just kind of sets your peak. Um, where do you want the peak to hit? And you, you know, you can go all the way from negative one dB all the way to like negative point zero zero five dB. So um, it's it's really pretty precise just to make sure you're not hitting zero and you're not clipping but you don't really have to worry about that especially if you're going to be compensating with this volume knob here all I really do is just you know turn the volume down and just start driving it until I get the crunch and then you kind of have to play with the volume and the drive to get to the area where it sits the best so you know you can already see that just these two plugins alone I'm able to open up my world in a mixing perspective or a mixing sense that I was never able to you know let's just say two weeks ago so, you know, like I said, this MB7 mixer, even just of the VST hosting, you're using, you're using Pro Tools and you're just using it for VST hosting and you don't want to use anything else, right away it's worth worth the money. Every penny that you spend on it. Like, I have probably about 20 plugins uh, in VST format that I use. Um, not a lot, but there's some that I use more than others. But just for the price of this one plugin, it literally paid for those plugins 10 times over. So uh, yeah, if, if you're if you have a lot of VSTs that you're not able to use in, in Pro Tools, I honestly suggest um, picking this bad boy up. So let me just show you the drums and the bass, uh, what they sound like when they're off, and then I'll turn them on, and then you'll see exactly why I love this MB7 mixer now with this VST hosting. So our apparent volume went through the roof, our peak volume is pretty much steady. It might have increased about a dB or so, but overall, beautiful. Love the way it sounds. Sounds amazing. Great. All right, so on to the piano. So let's load this up. So what I did with this piano, I took, um, you know, more advantage of the other features that this plugin has to offer. Like you can see here, this linking function here, um, this just links the two faders together so you can move them in tandem but um but yeah i just i wanted to, you know increase volume or whatever like for instance on this channel i want to increase at three dbs and i want to pull this down two db so you know it's like an eq you're kind of bumping things up turning things down and uh, it's good to link the two channels together in this case this one is in dual mono mode and the reason why i want to do in dual mono mode um, well, I guess I didn't really have a good reason for it, to be honest with you. I think I was going to try to do some uh, mid-side originally. And this, this button right here allows you to work in mid-side. So the right fader now becomes the sides. So if I bump this up, let me unlock this. If I bump this up, essentially I'm turning up the sides. And the middle is becoming quieter because the sides are getting louder. But, um, but yeah, I guess after playing with it after a while, I just decided, hey, you know, turn that off. I don't need that. Uh, sorry, before I get into this explanation, another really cool thing I like about this plugin is that you can increase the size of the window. 
So, you know, if, if this one's too small for you, which is fine for me, you know, you can increase it or depending on the screen. So if you're like using a laptop or whatever, you can, you know, use a smaller version of the mixer. If you have a, like a massive screen, you're they're working like 27 inches or something like that. You can go to the extreme just so that you can see exactly what you're doing. Cause sometimes the little finer details get annoying to look at after a while when they're, when they're so small and so tiny, that's a cool little feature there. Just thought I'd mention that. But anyways, as to what I'm doing here, I got three completely different things going on with this. I wanted to see if I could do something kind of crazy with this piano. I literally wanted to create my own sound. And that's another cool thing about this plugin is you can create things that never existed before. You know, yeah, you can take a piano and EQ it, you know, and you can choose 30 different EQs and do that. They're all going to give you a slightly different tone, but you can literally do things different with this plugin every time you pull up a piano. It's just your your imagination. That's That's all that's limiting you. So in this case with the bottom end, I set my band cutoff frequency here in, in the first band here at 298. So anything at 298 and below, I'm using the R compressor. And this is just to kind of, you know, tame that bottom end. It was kind of getting a little bit uh, beefy. And, um, you know, the R compressor does a good job. You know, this, this thing compresses bass really well like that. And then in the middle here, um, from 298 to 1200, I decided to add a reverb. Why? You think in that zone it would probably sound bad, but I tried it out for whatever reason it sounded good. In this case, I'm using the True, True Verb again with the Waves plugins because they added the audio suite capabilities. So that, that was nice. I can use the Waves stuff in here now. Um, and yeah, I just chose the medium plate and just kind of played with all these, you know, faders here, the direct early reflection reverb until I got what I wanted. And then the S1 Imager, I'm using this to just make those lower mids just really really wide and it's just again it's one of those things it just sounded really cool it made the piano sound really cool so I did that and then these upper mids here I got the super tap delay which is kind of cool because from basically you know 1200 all the way up to 7500 I got these two delays going on in the left and right channel but they're only those delays are only being heard from that frequency spectrum from 1200 all the way to 7500 so from 1200 and below and 7500 and above there's absolutely zero delay going on in that freak in those frequency spectrums so that's kind of cool and then I, I turned down this um this original um i guess you call it the direct signal i turned it down a little bit because in those upper mids it was you know just a little bit harsh i guess you could say and just kind of tucking those back allowed the lower frequencies to pop through and um, yeah, I just timed it out to about an eighth uh, triplet and I have the settings here at one and three and this is sync. I have this on auto. So this is timed directly to the track. And again, that's another update that they did in point version 2.03. They added the syncing capabilities and so far I've seen no problems whatsoever with the syncing cap capabilities. So everything's good on that front. So let me play the piano and solo and I'll bypass it first and then I'll unbypass it and you'll hear it's a pretty big difference in the way the piano sounds before and after. You know what? We got to go over here. So yeah, really cool. It just it's definitely a different tone. There's something really tonally different about that, but I think depending on the record that you're working on, if you can take the original tone and go from that to what I ended up with, um, you know, it's it sounds really cool, but there I feel like because of the delays and everything, there's a little bit more of a, an emotional impact from that piano and it's definitely brighter. It's not so mid-range focused in this case. And, and there's that sort of emotional impact that I'm now getting from that piano performance. So let me do it one more time. Another thing I forgot to mention, I can't believe I forgot this, but I took these pan knobs here and um, one's for the right channel, one's for the left channel. I put them both at 0%. So what I'm effectively doing is I'm collapsing the left and right into mono. 
So anything from 298 and below is all mono. Everything else is stereo. So um, so yeah, it just helps to kind of clean up, you know, any type of stereo instrument that you have, especially when you have a lot of left and right information, and it's taking up a lot of that bottom frequency space. I forgot to mention that, but I just noticed it. And I was hearing it too. I was like, oh, that bottom end sounds really mono. And I was like, ah, that's why. Um, next, we got the vocals, but we got effects. And the thing about this plugin is, is the fact that, you know, there's a lot of effects out there as far as reverbs and delays and everything, but you can literally take this plugin and create some crazy effects and stuff that, you know, didn't exist before. And the fact that you can use an, an aux bus for like a reverb and a delay and everything like that, you can actually create your own little effects going on, but this literally just takes it to the next level. So for the first reverb, just kind of ignore this one for a minute. This is just a general reverb, so I'll block that one out for now. So for the first one, this MB7 mixer, on the bottom end here, so from you know 1.3 all the way down to zero, I'm using this Epic Verb from uh, Variety of Sound. And uh, the only thing I think I did was turn up the time, and I think I used a preset on this one, and I can't remember which one because it's not showing up it was some sort of plate like a vocal plate or something like that and uh, but anyways all you really need to know is I turn up the time and uh, that's about it and I think I also no I didn't touch anything else so that's it and then I use this Q2 from waves just cutting out a lot of that low end and then this arc compressor here just because you know when the vocals get dynamic I just didn't want that reverb to uh, you know, follow that dynamics in the vocal. And also the spread, I turn this out, so I'm making this more stereo. And um, yeah, so this is the stereo version of the plugin. Actually, another cool thing about the stereo version is you have this mono button. So if you're getting crazy, like playing around the spread button or whatever, and things are starting to get a little phasey, you can just click this mono button here and then see what it sounds like in mono. So if you lose a lot of that punch and a lot of that clarity, you can kind of just start tweaking things um, until you get that right balance between stereo and mono. Um, for the upper region here, I just use the doubler. This is kind of like an exciter, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, just you know, setting up the parameters with the detune three and negative three, setting up a delay on each side. And uh, yeah, the spread's at you know 0.3 percent. That's not really doing much. And then I also have a uh, our compressor on this as well. So everything from 1.3 all the way up the frequency spectrum has a doubler on it. So it's really adding a cool effect. So I'm getting two things at once. I'm getting a little bit of reverb in the bottom, and I'm also getting um, like an exciter in the top frequencies. So let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send it pre, pre-fader, and we'll see what it sounds like. So this is just... Um, this is just the effect now, so you won't hear the vocals, just the effect. And I'm going to turn off the doubler and you'll hear the reverb. Let me turn that spreader down to zero. Okay, so let's listen to the exciter. Both of them together. So, I mean, you can make an argument that you could literally create these two effects with two different buses. You know, yeah, that's true, but... Um, like I said, there's just some more creative possibilities that you can do with this plugin, you know, on its own that you can't do, um, you know, without it. So it's just, it lets you experiment, lets you create new things. And then instead of having to load up, you know, two, three, four different buses to kind of create all these cool different effects, you can literally just do it in one plugin. And then you can save that preset and bring it up for another session if you want. I also added a de-esser just because of the harshness. Um, next... Is a delay. Um, so what I'm doing with this one is I I did a four band delay because I want to just attack these two middle frequencies here. But I'm 
I turned off the the bottom one B1 and then I turned off the top one uh, B4 so those are completely muted and the only thing that's audible is you know what's coming out of B2 and B3 so a B2 the first one here let me highlight that so you can see it and there you go and the pink one the first is a nasty DLA by variety of sound again love the plugins and this one I think I used a preset uh, tape ping pong tape or something like that and uh, I didn't touch anything on it at least that I remember and um, yeah then I used the the variety of sound density mark 2 and uh, yeah you know just again this thing with delays and reverse sometimes when the dynamics of the original vocal kind of you know moves up and down the delays move with it as well and I just you know I'm the type of person I like to compress my delays just a personal thing and I also added this distortion it was sounding a little bit too clean you know because the top one was kind of edgy uh, like B3 because it held a higher frequency range space in the you know the track so I wanted to sort of give it a little bit more grit so that it could feel a little bit closer um, to this B3 delay here that I added in so that's why I added this grit and then for the second one for B3 oops um, I added a super tap from waves again auto sync it times it to the track in this case the track is 88 beats per minute and it just literally snaps right into that I used eighths for the grid so it's an eighth note and a quarter note and uh, yeah that's it and it's hard left hard right and then I put a reverb on it just because it was a little bit dry and it was a little bit edgy so the reverb helped me kind of put it you know just a little bit back in the mix and made it sound a little bit more lush so it's not so uh, edgy on the ears I guess you could say so let's listen to the first one bypass it and I'll listen to B2 first Okay, so let's listen to B3. And together. So after that I have an L1 limiter and that's just uh, limiting everything so it's keeping all those delays in check. So I have a, you know, a compressor on there but just to keep both of them and glue them more together those two uh, those two delays the the L1 limiter kind of helped me do that. And uh, yeah, so it sounds like everything is kind of erratic and all the delays are all over the place, but once it's in context with everything else, uh, it definitely makes a little bit more sense. So let me play the vocals now. And uh, I'll play the piano with the vocals, and then you can hear everything. Then you blame me and plug me out. How long did you think I'd last? Then you disappear for weeks to pass. How many times could I pack? But stand still is what I did. Love like. So again with the effects off. Then you blame me and block me out. How long did you think I'd last? Then you disappear for weeks apart. How many times could I pack? But stand still as what I did. Love like. And now let's bring the drums in with the MB7 mixer on. And the bass isn't playing in this section, so I'll leave that off. Then you blame me and block me out. How long did you think I'd last? Then you disappear for weeks apart. How many times could I pack? But stand still as what I did. Love like I did never fix. Cool. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So 
there's a lot of cool things you can do with this this plugin like i said i didn't want to explain every little feature on it because honestly there's so many other people out there that are doing you know videos on it so i'd let them sort of talk about that stuff you know and actually another thing i wanted to talk about before i went sorry this is kind of the one thing that really excited me and this is the thing that i was just like damn the possibilities you know like all these things that are going through my head but think about this okay you need a, a multi-band compressor right so there's lots of options out there you know there's me mcdsp waves um you know whatever you name it everyone's got a multi-band compressor but what if you want flavors from from different places you know you wanted this band to be you know multi-band compressed with a certain compressor because it has a certain color flavor to it and then you wanted another band to be you know compressed with a different compressor because it has a different color well with this plugin you can do that which is really cool so for instance on this low band here i got a arc compressor and then for this low mid here i got an l1 that's right you can use a limiter limiter is a compressor right and then for this upper mid band i got this density compressor from variety of sound and then for the top band here, another compressor from Variety Sound, Thrill Seeker. So you can have all these different colors compressing all these different bands doing different things. Because, you know, maybe maybe the, the low end needs some sort of crunch or bite to it. So you need a compressor that's a little bit more aggressive. You don't want a compressor that's too soft. So that's kind of what's cool. And then, you know, I saved a couple of settings here. Like, for instance, L1. So you create a compressor that's, or a multiband compressor that's all L1s. You know, who would have thought that? <laughs> never, I would have never in a million years thought of an, an L1 multiband compressor. You know, but now I have the ability to do it. Or um, R compressor. I have one instance of R comp or the R, of the R comp on all the bands here. You know, I can do seven bands if I want. I can do three bands. I can do two. Whatever you, whatever you want. Like, like I said, limitless. Like this plugin, for me, anyways, it's a no-brainer. It's a buy. I'm gonna personally be using it a lot more, especially for hosting VSTs. So if you follow my stuff and, um, you know, you did purchase premium tutorials or whatever, um, like I said, be on the lookout because a lot of the future stuff I'm going to be doing is going to be using this plugin. So if you don't have it and you want access to certain files or whatever, then I would suggest picking it up. And like I said, look below. There's a coupon code. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my little two cents for you. Anyways, till next video, take care.